Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. Even more blessings to you on this beautiful, I call it beautiful Tuesday night. I know it's, it seems treacherous outside, but it is a blessing to be alive. I'm telling you, it's a blessing to be alive and it's a blessing to have a roof over your head. You have got um, heat. I am thankful. I am thankful. Thank you again for tuning in to uh, this is Network of Believers Tuesday night Bible study. I'm yours truly, uh, Pastor G, Pastor Eugene Whitmer. I'm the proud pastor of Network of Believers, uh, some incredible people. And I'm always thankful. I'm always thankful. I thank God for this opportunity to come before you once again. We're in a very beautiful time in God. Uh, this is a very uh, uh, interesting time because of what God has on his plate and on his, what he has assigned to to and for you. This is the time that you are actually going to get everything that God promised you when you put in place the instructions that he is setting before you. And I, I am excited. If you will, will you please, 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 please share us. Please, please share us on tonight. Please share. Let's pray. Let's jump into this word. There's a word from the Lord. I'm excited about it. I'm thankful for being the vessel uh, for God is using for this particular plat platform right here. And God's got one for you as well. Father, we thank you so much tonight for your this time of grace that we're in, God. Thank you for understanding, God. Thank you so much for being the God of our salvation. You have never failed us. You have never failed us. God, we thank you so much for this incredible time that we are living in, God. Even though the pressure is, is on the, the things are coming against us, God, but we still believe you. We know that you are faithful to your word and you're going to do exactly what you told us you was going to do. And we thank you for it. We appreciate you. We, we, we magnify you. We glorify you as God because we know that you are. Thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus, to redeem us all from a tragic end to a victorious end. Thank you so much for this word, adding weight to our and giving us another piece to our puzzle that we might walk in the wealthy place that you have designed for us. It's in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, guys, share, if you will. Please, 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 please share us on tonight. I am very excited. I'm jumping into the word. Uh, oh, let me say this before we get going. Uh, this Saturday, this Saturday, which is February the 4th, we, we will be in our Mississippi location this Saturday February the 4th, this Saturday, February the 4th. You look at it right there. We will be in and at our Mississippi location. If you are in the Mississippi area, hey, come out. This is at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning, 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. Now, somebody say, who does anything at 10 a.m.? We do, we do, we do, we do. And we are very excited about what God is doing in the Mississippi area with our pastors, David and Tanya Boyd, uh, Jehovah Shammah. Network of Believers Mississippi, Jehovah Shama, thank God for it. Now, let's jump into the word today, uh, tonight. I've been teaching because there's been an urgency. There's been an urgency. And, 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 and last night as we were teaching, the Lord reminded me to remind you, those of you that are hearing, that his heart's desire, hear me, his heart's desire is that you prosper and be in health. Prosper and be in health. In other words, you cannot desire to be blessed more than God desire to bless you. It's just no possible way. You don't even have the energy to desire more than God desires to bless you. Now, that's incredible. But here's one thing that I must understand. God desires to bless me. I will get the blessing when I connect to the instructions of God. We are in partnership with God. You and I are in partnership with God. If God trusts you enough to be in partnership with him, you should embrace it that I am in partnership with God. He's given me, he's given me the tools and he's trusting me to be uh, the agent that make his kingdom come, that kingdom come uh, on earth as it is in heaven. That's how it happens through us. And God's desire is that we step into that level. But there are instructions, there are instructions that we must follow. It is unfortunate that we were taught that there was no instruction. Grace removed all the requirement, all the criteria of God. That's not true. I know that's what is taught 
But God is reminding us again. He's bringing us back. Why is he so adamant about this now? It's because it is time for you to walk in that wealthy place. He has designed this time. This is, is the time of God in your life. Many of you have been struggling. It seems like it wouldn't happen. Well, you have just entered into the right timing of God. Don't you dare give up. Step up and grace is going to be released to you to walk in this place. Now, let's jump into this word. We're calling tonight. Tonight's teaching is he that hath an ear, let him hear. He that hath an ear, let them hear. I was I was studying on this morning and the Lord brought this to my attention. He took me to uh, Revelation chapter three, verse number 14. And we're going to enter in at that particular passage. We're still on the uh, follow the instruction. I started last night, follow the instructions. And the sacrifice in this season will, to be, will be to be obedient to the specifics of what God says. You got to be obedient. You got to be focused. You got to be focused in this season because those that are focused will be the people that see the hand of God come. This is going to be a rapid season. This is going to be an acceleration season for those. This is the time. We are in that time. We're in that time. So we cannot miss this moment. We cannot miss this moment. We cannot miss this moment. Do y'all hear me? We cannot miss this moment. God's desire, he desires that we hear what he is saying so that we don't miss this moment in him, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Now, in the third chapter of uh, Revelation, not, not Revelations, it's Revelation. There's only one revelation that the book of Revelation presents. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's interesting. I'll be teaching even more on the book of Revelation and kind of give an insight uh, of the direction of the book as it relates to our particular time. Tonight, I'm going to be entering into the third chapter of Revelation. There was words that was spoken to John to relay to the people of God. Now, this was actually seven churches in Asia, Asia, seven churches in Asia Minor. And this was so important that they hear this because there was instructions that were given John, the revelator, on the Isle of Patmos to the people of God that were in tribulation. He says, he that follows, he that heareth and understand this is strategy to move past and through this moment called tribulation. And God is doing the same thing now. Again, he's raising up voices that have instructions that will allow us to move through these very turbulent moments. He want to download instructions. He want to download instructions into our hearing that would allow us to go through these times, these very different, these very unusual times. He's going to allow us to go through these times. It's going to be an incredible moment. So get ready for it. Get ready for it. There are those of you that are listening to me. You are the voices of this season. And God is going to allow you to speak a word that is going to come into the hearing of the people of God. And God is going to do something so incredible in this season. Please share. Please share. Please share. Now, I'm going to go to the third chapter, chapter four of the 14th verse of Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to stay on point because there's so much there. There's so much stuff I want to unpack, but I got to stay focused because I got to get you to get this message. Now, this, this revelation that was given to John is the, the church at Laodicea. This is a message, a strong message from the, the now, now, hear me. Every time John received a message, it said to the angel of the house at a specific Philadelphia, Tyre, Tyre, uh, 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 Ephesus, uh, uh, the churches, uh, uh, Laodicea, he would always send a message to the angel of the house. You know, when we go to places and we speak, we say to the angel of the house because that's God's protocol. He sends messages. He sends it through the leader to translate or to give to the fellowship. And that's very important. That's why he says in this season, Jeremiah 3, verse 15, I'm raising up pastors after my own heart, and they will feed you with knowledge, not just a bunch of knowledge, but the understanding of what they just delivered to you. And this is important because this won't be a season of us just learning new things. This would be a season of us getting understanding of what God desires for us to understand so we can move into the blessings of God. 
This is going to be crucial. This is why you have to be very careful what you allow to enter into your ears. You got to be get very careful what you allow to enter into your hearing because it's going to develop something in you. What you eat determines the body that you build. Now, I always say this, what Adam ate deter uh, caused us to live where we are. Now, what we eat will allow us to come out of it. This is why God is sending wrong, strong revelation. He that hath an ear, let him or uh, her hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Now, let's dig in. Let's dig in. This church at Laodicea or the Laodiceans, I got to give you this uh, fact about them. This was a very prosperous people. Uh, they were known, if you do any study on the Laodicean or the church at Laodicean or the area uh, in Asia of Laodicea, these people were very innovative, if you will. They were very prosperous people. They, they, if, they lived in what we would call the best neighborhood. They, these were people of means. They were known for the, the textile industry. They were known for their medical school. They were known, they had a little something, something. It's a very prosperous town. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you to understand why Jesus would give John this revelation about Laodicea because they were very rich. They were very educated. They were, they were very innovative. Then most of all, what you have to understand, the, the one fact that must be understood about this church at Laodicea, they were what you call proselytes, proselytes. Now, what is a proselyte? A proselyte is someone that was converted from one uh, persuasion, if you will, one belief into another belief. But something interesting uh, uh, with these proselytes were the fact that they converted from but they didn't complete the conversion. We'll say it again. They converted from just, just, just to make an illustration, a modern day illustration. It's like as if they were a, a, a Muslim believing people, a person, and then they converted to Christianity. But they decided that it's good that I keep both of them. They didn't fully transfer into one persuasion. They kept a little bit of this and a little bit of that. A little bit of this, a little bit that. Now, today, there's a, there's a term for it. It's called spiritual fluidity. What does that mean? That means that I can dibble, dabble in a, a little bit of it all. I get the best parts of everything. So I, I got a one God. I got a God number two. I got a God number three, a God number four. So if the God number one, who I've been taught about my whole life, don't come through, then I already got a, 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 a B plan, and then I got a, a C plan. Now, I wanted this to be very clear as we enter into this text, because it's going to speak something very clearly to the times and that we're living in now. Here's what the Spirit of the Lord led John to declare to the church at Laodicea. Here it is. He's, a, he's talking to the church at Laodicea. Let's dig in. I want to read quite a bit, and then I'm going to come unpack this. Because this is interesting. This is the time that we are going to get focused and obey God. Why? Because this is the time that God want to overwhelm you with his blessings. He want to overwhelm you with the things that he promised you. He, want, he desires to overwhelm you. This is the time that you should be overwhelmed. But there is an instruction that you must follow to get God's good. Let's go. Here it is. It says, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things say it the amen. These things say it the amen. These things say it the amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now we know that's talking about Jesus. The beginning of the creation of God, the, of the creation of God, the word. 15 verse says, I know thy works. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. 16 verse, stay with me now. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. I will spill thee out of my mouth. I will spill thee out of my mouth. Now look at the 17th verse. Because thou sayest, 
I am rich and increased with goods and have no need of nothing. I know it and know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Look at what the 18th verse says. I counsel thee, I counsel thee. Look at what he's saying. He's saying, I counsel thee, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye song that thou mayest see. The 19th verse says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, I chasten, uh, uh, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. Now, here's what the Lord said to me today. He says, now, this is the message for such a time as this. This is the message for such a time as this. He says, I'm getting my people prepared because I'm ready to do something. But I need to paint the picture in the front of my people so that they understand exactly where I am and where they are. So the text starts out by saying, here's, he's telling John, here is the revelation that you will give to the church that seem it to have everything. You'll give it to a people that seem it as if they got it going on. They got a good job. They are, they are working their craft. They got great ideas. It seems like they have got their prosperous in everything that they put their hands to do. They got all of this stuff. He says, well, here's what you're going to say to this church at Laodicea. He says, you're going to say to them. Now, let's look at this again. Let's go back. And I want to I want I want to look at this text again, because I need you to see this because it's important. It says, and behold, say this to them. Say this to them. Look at what it said. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Remember, this is a people that was a people that had converted. They had converted from the prior belief system into Christianity. They were in the conversion into Christianity. Uh, uh, these Laodiceans, please hear me very clearly, because this is a picture of where we stand right now. These Laodiceans were people that profess being children of God. They were professors of God. I am a child of God. They had all of the Christian lingo. They had it all down. They could say it. They could bring it up. They could pull up. They knew all of the church moves, the lay on the scene. They, these were people that professed to be children of God. They knew all the church lingo. They knew how all the church moved. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. You could not tell the difference in their lives and the people that did not profess anything in God. You couldn't tell the difference in their life. Their life was not any different from any other person that you would meet. This is the lay of the city. They had the church lingo. They, they, they knew how to talk the talk. They knew how to walk the walk. But when you looked at their lifestyle, their lifestyle, there was nothing different about their lifestyle. They professed to be a child of God. The lay of the sins would argue. They would argue with you when it was said, they would they would have an all out brawl with you, an argument with you when you would say to them that a life in Christ was a disciplined life. If you said to them, you got to make a standard, you got to live a standard. The lay of the sins were fighters. They were ready to go in on you. They would tell you you were so behind time because you didn't understand grace and they would tell you that we are on a different level now. We 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 have come into uh, the awareness of of God being bigger than what you presented. So lay on the sin with people that when you told them that they had to shift their lifestyle, they had to change the life that they were living. They were upset with you. They were ready to fight. They would cuss you out in Jesus name. They would cut. They would they would come. They would fight. If you said that they were not a child of God, they were ready to go in. When you told them that your lifestyle must honor the father, they said you didn't understand. The father, the father is, is, is grace in me. I can do it like I want to do it. His grace covered me. These are the lay of the sin. I want to paint this picture because here's what the spirit of the Lord said. He says, let them know. 
let them know because of my desire in this season to do a thing in their life. And as David says in Psalm 24, who can ascend to the hill of God? You must have clean hands. Your attitude must be together. And the Laodiceans were people that professed to be God people. But when, you, when, when it was suggested to them that you got to shift your lifestyle, they said, you don't get this. You don't understand who we are. Don't you see how much stuff we got? Don't you see how blessed we are? Can't you see how many cars I got? Can't you see how big my house is? Don't you see? I'm prosperous. There, this, this has got to be the hand of a God. This has got to be the hand of God. The little the sin got an illegitimate. I, I mentioned this the other day. This is something that the spirit of God dropped in, in my spirit. The Leo the sins got an illegitimate revelation of grace that caused them to be lukewarm. This is what Jesus said to John. Tell them they are lukewarm. In other words, they are proselytes. In other words, they 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 got converted. They got they got converted, but they didn't finish the conversion process. They got a piece of the conversion, but they decided that this was enough. This this little bit is enough for me. I don't want to go all the way over there because I don't want anyone suggesting to me that I got to stop the things that I'm doing. This feels good to me. This feels so they got an illegitimate revelation of grace that caused them to be lukewarm. In other words, on Sunday, listen to me, listen to me. On Sunday, they were churchy. But if you caught them in another atmosphere, you never know what you will get out of. They'll come alive on you. Again, I'm going to say, they had all the church lingo. They know all the words to say. They know how to do it. They, you can't beat them. You can't beat them shouting. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't beat them doing church. They know how to do church like nobody else can do church. These were the Laodiceans. They were proselytes. They were, they were people that were converted from one persuasion, but they didn't come all the way across. They get when you say something about lifestyle, they ready to fight. They tell you that you uh, you don't understand. You trying to condemn me. I don't, I don't I don't need to hear your condemnation. You trying to kill me. You don't get it. You behind time. You trying to be traditional on me. Every time you suggested that the life that is lived in Christ is a different life than the life of every. You couldn't tell the difference in the Laodiceans' life. It it depended on what atmosphere they was in, what you would get. That's how they were chameleons. Whenever they were with a, a certain group of people, they could go all out and show that certain group of people that I can go all out too. But when they got to church, they were they were they were they, they were all in at church. You had to be careful with them because if you approach them wrong, they'll come out the bag on you. <laughs> These were the people, the lay of the sin were the people that caused other people to think the whole Christian movement was fake. Say it again. These Laodiceans were the people that caused the people that didn't know what that that was deciding that I'm gonna make a change in my life. If they ran into the Laodicean, they would say, "Oh man, I'm not doing that because you know how to speak in tongues real good." But all of a sudden, I'm seeing some other tongues being fired out of your mouth. <laughs> this, this, these were the Laodiceans. This how they acted. This how they act. So, so the Lord is saying, John, tell them. They, they, they very prosperous. See, the Laodiceans were prosperous people. They had industry. They had gold. They had silver. Now watch this. They also was very profound in the medical field. The Laodiceans came up with the thing with this eye saw where it could clear your eyes. If you got in trouble, they knew how to, they knew how to clear your eyes up. This is who the Laodiceans is. But they were lukewarm. They were prosperous, but they didn't have a lifestyle. Oh, look at look at what the text says. Let's go a little bit deeper in the text. Look at the 17th verse. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art what? Wretched. He says, they are wretched. You are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Look at what the Lord says to them. He says, I see you're prosperous. He says, but well, you got so caught up that you don't understand that your prosperity is actually not as prosperous as you think that it is. The Leos, the sins got intoxicated. They got very intoxicated with the illegitimate grace message. They got intoxicated with it. They thought that the kingdom life was the accumulation of material things. They thought that if I can get more things, it's a sign that I'm living the kingdom. So they spent their time making sure they got more, uh, no matter what the cost was. I'm getting more to prove that I'm in the kingdom. No matter what the cost, 
uh, 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 was for them to get it. They was going to get it. it. It didn't matter how many people they had to walk over to get it. It didn't matter how unethical it was. I got to prove to you that I am prosperous and I'm living the kingdom life. <laughs> so watch this. Watch it. I want to show you this again, because at the end of the 17th verse, he says, he says, he says, and know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Look at what he's saying. He said at the end of verse 17, look at it, look at it. He said, you have accumulated things, but your life is a wreck. He says, you keep accumulating things, but your life is a wreck. Relationships are failing. Marriages are ending. Listen to, listen to what he said. He said, you got a lot of stuff, but your relationships are out of whack. Your marriages are ending. Depression is at an all-time high. He says, he says, look at your children. Your children are battling and succumbing to addiction. But you're saying that I got it going on. He's talking to a Laodicea. He's talking to a people that was proud. He's talking to people. He said, thou art wretched. Uh, uh, this is not my opinion. Here it is. Because I said I am rich and increased with good. He said, you thought rich and increased with good meant you had need of nothing. He says, you need a grace move. You need a move of the Holy Spirit in your life because you are wretched. You are miserable. You are poor. You are blind. You are naked. You are naked. He says, you need. He says, this is the time of move. This is the time of the move of God. Now, let's go to the 18th verse. I need to show you this in the 18th verse. Look at what he said. I counsel thee. This is what he says. He says, I'm counseling you. I'm counseling you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and with raiment and white raiment, and thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye saw that thou mayest see. Listen to what he says. He says, I'm counseling you now. In other words, the door of the doors are opening. The father says, I'm opening the opportunity for you to make a decision to reconnect to truth. I'm opening the door for you to reconnect to truth. And receive the true riches of a kingdom life. He says, thou art blind. He says, now listen, he's talking to a people that had come with witty invention. They had this, this, this eye sob that they had created. But he's telling them, you created that, but you're blind. He's talking to all of us. This is the season in the time of repentance. He's saying to you, you're doing good stuff. You, you're making advancement. You, 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 you're buying things that you never bought before. He says, but don't allow the enemy to trick you in this season. When everything around you is collapsing, everything is collapsing. He says this, he says, he says, the shame of thy neckness. When he talks about the shame of thy neckness, he's referring to the ignorant times when you were arrogant in your ignorance. You didn't know any better. Nobody told you. you. You didn't know that you were naked. You didn't know that you were exposed. You didn't know that you were in the wrong place. You, you didn't know. So you were very flamboyant in your, in your time of being ignorant. He's talking to us. He's saying it to us. He says, now I am ready to give you the true life, the true riches. But they come with your yes. They come with you saying amen to what I desire. It comes with a sacrifice. It's, it's a sacrificial life. It's time for you to let go that the things that your flesh is pulling at you after uh, time after time your flesh is pulling. And he says, I'm ready to release you from this. I'm ready to give you a consistent life, a consistent life in truth. I'm ready to give you your identity back. But you're going to have to follow the instructions. It's time for the instructions to be followed. He says, the shame of your nakedness. He says, I want to restore to you your life. If you say yes. If you say yes, he says, I'm restoring your life. 19 first. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now listen to what the Lord just said to you. The Lord says, you can't sleep because he loves you so much. You're watching people that seems like they're getting away with everything. Let them go. But you can't get away with everything. You can't move like you want to move. 
The Lord says, I love you too much. This is why. Look at what he says. He says, and as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He says, be zealous. Look at what he's saying to you. He says, I'm going to stay on you. I'm not going to let you go. I don't care what you did in your past. I don't care how many times you've done it. Today is the day that I'm calling you forth because I have given you a great assignment. Listen to me. I have given you. Are you listening to me? I want to talk to you that are in your room and you feel like you've been deprived of life. You feel like I don't never get to do nothing. You feel like this is not. The Lord has preserved for you. He preserved you unto himself for such a time as this. You better be glad that he didn't release you to go where they went because you wouldn't have made it back. You better be glad he pulled on you. He, you better be glad he kept talking to your spirit and saying, no, you better be glad. This is what he's saying to you. He says, be zealous, be zealous. Therefore, and repent. In other words, if you would make a decision tonight, the Lord says he's going to stand with you. I'm rebuking you because I love you. Now repent. Now repent. Now repent. Change your mind. Don't look at the things of the world and say they are better than what. You just haven't absolutely come into the will of the Lord because once you get into the will of the Lord, there's a release that is coming to your life. You hear me? There is a release that is coming. You don't... You haven't seen it like you're going to see it. There is a release that is coming. Are you ready for this release? There is a release that is coming to your life. I was talking to you. The Lord is going to give you the release of a lifetime. He's going to give it to you. This is your time of release. Let's go back to the scripture. Now, listen to what he says here. Listen to what he says. Behold, he's knocking now. He says, behold, 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 behold. Look at what he's saying. He's saying, behold. It, like as if it's never been before. Now the door is open. Now it's being revealed. He says, behold, look now, look now, look now. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, woman, hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him, her, and he, she, with me now listen to what he says he says i'm standing at the door and knocking i'm standing at the door and knocking now this is interesting to me because he's talking to a church at laodicea a people that are supposed to be called by his name he says i'm standing at the door and knock i'm standing at the door of your sanctuary this suggests that there are people now listen to me very carefully there are people that think they are having church there are people that think they're in the will of God. There are people that think they are in the place of God. Paul had this argument in Acts chapter 17 as he goes into Mars Hill. He says, I see your devotions. I see you are doing what you think is church. But there's an inscription on the place of your altar. What is the inscription? It says, to the unknown God. Now, here's what the Lord says. I'm standing at the door of a church and knocking Evidently, they're having church and I'm not even inside of it. They're doing something and I'm not even a part of it. So what he's saying in this season, I'm knocking, let me in so I can come in and show you exactly what it is to do this time. I'm standing at the door. What he's saying to you, perhaps you thought I was already there. Perhaps, perhaps you thought I was already in on this. He says, no, I'm knocking. This is the time of the knocking. I'm standing at that door and I'm not, if you would hear my voice, the day that you hear my voice and harden not your heart, if you would open up this door, I will come in with you and I will sup with you and he with me. Now, this is called communion. This is so powerful. You got to understand what God is saying. In a time of communion, he says, I come in and I sup with you and you with me. This means that this is a moment of communion. What does that mean? If you read in the scripture, when Jesus broke bread, the Bible says that their eyes became open. In other words, that was something I didn't understand prior to this communion moment. And when I allow him to come in and sup with me, 
This is the time of intimacy. What does it mean? That when you're at the table and you're eating, this is why people will always in an argument when they disperse from somebody say, you ate at my table. What does that mean? We were intimate. I told you secrets that I didn't tell nobody else. And so when the Lord says, if you open this door, I'm going to come in and I'm going to sup with you. He says, I'm going to give you a secret that unlocks the door of your future. I'm going to tell you things about yourself that you never heard. I'm going to reveal you to you. I'm going to give you my plan for you. And he says to you tonight, I am the only one that is able to give you the keys to your life. I'm the only one that can give you your proper identity. I am the only one. It wasn't your job. I don't care how many raises you got. I, it wasn't your house. I don't care how beautiful it is. It's not your car. I don't care how many you have. It's me. It's me. It's you opening up the door, the father says to him. He says, when you open up the door, I will come in and I will sup with you and you will sup with me. Look at what the 21st verse says. To him that overcome it, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as, look at this, even as, even as, even as I also overcame. And I am set down with my father in his throne. This is so powerful. I need to read it again because somebody needs to hear this tonight. To him that overcome it will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I am overcome, even as I am overcome, even as I am overcome. Oh, my God. And I'm set down with my father with my father in his throne. Now, this is what the Lord, the spirit of the Lord has said to me. And I want to, I want you to hear me tonight. I want you to hear me tonight because there are so many of you that are living in vices. Now, look at, look at what the verse, he says, go back to the 21st. The spirit of the Lord just pushed me back to the 21st. He says, behold, I'm standing at the door I'm knocking. In other words, this is a moment that I'm coming in. If you will let me, he says, uh, he says, I know you are having what you think is great devotion. But he's giving you a moment. He's trying to say, he's trying to reveal something that maybe the devotional moment that you thought you were having is really not the devotional moment he wants you to have because you haven't seen results from the devotion. Now he's trying to correct your devotion. And if you let him correct the devotion, it's going to stop all the commotion. This is the only thing. He says, if you will open up this door of your heart, I'm knocking. He says, I got grace. That's going to come in with me. I'm bringing grace that allows you to break free. Here's what the Lord says. You will break free, free from all the vices that had you wrapped up and tied up and refused to let you go. He says, I'll open it. He says, I'm about to unlock the chains. I'm going to unlock the chains that's been holding you there for year, year after year. The thing that you thought that you couldn't get away from. He says, I'm going to unlock this door. I'm going to lock this chain. And again, to him that overcome it, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcome and am set down with my father. So in his throne. So he says, I'm presenting to you authority for this next level. Now, listen, he said to him that overcome, overcome what? To him that overcome your flesh dominating you. To him that will overcome the desires of your flesh that keep you running after your fleshly desire. The, he that can overcome the false teachings. He says it's on you. You're going to have to overcome the false. How do I overcome false teachings? It's when I close my ears to when you know that that's not right. Just for the benefit of somebody calling your name or being associated with somebody that you think can give you identity. You keep connecting yourself. But he says to him that overcome. The desires of their flesh, the overcoming, the false teachings, the things that cause you to abuse your body. These are the things that he says you got to overcome. He says, I'm standing here knocking, but I desire. He says, I will raise Lazarus. This is John chapter 11. He says, I'm about to create, uh, 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 do a miracle on something that was dead, Lazarus. He says, well, here's the thing. There's somebody that's got to remove this stone. And that's what he's saying to you, you tonight. I want to work a miracle in your life, but you're going to have to bust some moves. You're going to have to take the, initi uh, uh, the initiative that I won't be going around that. I don't care. I, there's a, this is a season that some of you that are listening to me right now, you're going to have to make a decision to let go of them. 
They can't come into your new season. I don't care how good. They my prayer partner. They are the very reason that you are in the vice that you're in now. Because a lot of it, what a lot of the things that we see is witchcraft. We're seeing witchcraft. We're seeing people that are preying on you. P-R-E-Y. Why are you supposed to be P-R-A-Y? They are preying on you. They are, they, are, they are seducing you. You are intoxicated because you never knew who you were. And they're giving you a little bit of opportunity. And you're taking all that God has given you and you're dropping it into it. Now it's time to break that chain. Now it's time to break that chain. He says, to him that overcome, to him that will overcome the false teaching, him that will overcome the desires of your flesh. I'm talented and you better use this talent. You better do this. He says, I'm giving you a moment to detox from all of that nonsense so that you can walk into the trueness of the kingdom. He says, even as I have also overcome. Now, this is very important that you understand. Why is he saying this? He says, there are some of you that have some things that you are shameful of. Now, he says, if any man, you know the scripture, would come after me. Here's what Jesus said. If any man would come after me, he got the first, number one, deny himself and take up his cross. Now, he got to deny himself, despise, listen to this, the shame. Y'all got to understand, deny himself and despise the shame. Why does he say the, the, uh, uh, deny himself before he said despise the shame and take up the cross? It's because when you look at the ugliness that this could present in this season, you don't want to expose this. You're going to say no. So he says you got to deny yourself, deny who you think you are, deny your ego. You're going to have to die and you're going to have to pick up this cross because it's time for you to carry it to its final destination and get rid of it. He says, if you're going to come after me, you're going to have to do what I've done. I had a cross to pick up. You're going to have to pick up a cross. He says, I don't want people. If I had a cross, I want you to pick up your cross. I don't want you to hide it because if you hide it, it will always return. The shame will always come back. For this, this season of your life, go ahead on and expose it and get rid of it because what you expose, the devil can't expose. What you declare, the devil can't declare. And so he says, once and for all, get them off your back. And I'm giving grace in this season for you to break free of everything that calls you to be in Punished. The Lord says, it's your time. It's your season. Now listen to what he says. I want to go back to the scripture again. To him that overcome it will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I am overcome and then sit down with my father in his throne. Do you understand what this means? This means that you're getting dominion over every attack of the enemy. This means that your time of being a victim is over. This, I know you're trying to process it in your own power. You're trying to process it from your strength. You can't win from your strength. This is the Lord says, I'm partnering with you. To him that overcome, to him that make a decision, I'm not going to force you. I'm going to give you an opportunity. You don't got to, you get to. This is the time that you get to. Let's go to the ending of this, this passage of scripture. Here's what he said. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying unto the churches. He says, this is the time of hearing. You're going to have to hear from God. Listen to me. Everything that you hear, just because it sounds like it's coming from a churchy place does not mean that it's God. I need you to hear me. Everything that you're hearing, if you're hearing something that don't cause change to come in your life, it is not from God because God is requiring change. He's requiring repentance. Anybody that try to preach you a gospel that tell you that you good like you are is doing more damage to you than they are doing good. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. When Jesus encountered the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery, he spent his whole time letting her know that I do not condemn you. That was, that was his number one job. He loved her like she was. He accepted her like she was. But here's what the text says. He loved her too much to leave her like that. 
y'all got to get this because the Lord said to me, you got to get this. He says, tell them I love them like they are, but I love them too much to leave them like that. And anybody that suggests to them that they can stay the way that they are, don't love them. Run, because they'll make you comfortable. They'll make you comfortable in a place that is not pleasing to God. They'll make you comfortable in a place that is not pleasing to God. And they'll, they'll convince you that you can name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, and don't tell you that there are some changes that need to be made. And you'll live your life cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle wondering, why is the Lord not hearing my prayer? I done got all of my prayer warriors. I done told everybody to come in and pray with me, but there's no change. You're not going to see the change until, until, until you make a decision, as the scripture said, and repent. That's when you're getting God's attention, is when you repent. Repent. This is the time of repentance, repentance, repentance. It is the most important thing on your agenda. You're not trying to convince God. He's already convinced. God is trying to convince you that I want to do this for you. Are you listening to me tonight? God's greatest desire is to let you know that he's got it. As he told Joshua, as we read last night, Joshua chapter 6, verse number 1, before he even entered into what is promised, he says, look, Joshua, I want you to get a clear view of the blessings I have for you, Joshua. Look, see, he's looking at Jericho. He says, I have already placed it in your hand. I have all, this is what you're feeling in your spirit right now. This is why I'm giving you truth. I need you to see this. God can drop something in your spirit. That's a work that's done. He says, this is my intent for you, Joshua. Look, he says, but you will never enter that city, Joshua, until you follow these meticulous instructions. That's what the Lord is saying. Too many people have heard, you know, it's been dropped in your spirit, the blessings, the wealthy place, the life that God desires for you to have. But it's a whole nother thing to take it from the spirit realm and see it manifest in the physical realm. To get it from the spirit realm to the physical realm, it will cause for you to follow God's meticulous instructions. And you don't get it until you come into the moment of consecration. It's not going to happen every time in scripture. He says, listen, come before me with consecration. He actually tells these people, if you go read this book of Joshua, he says, now I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to do a new thing. This is going to be incredible. He says, I got it for everybody, but unfortunately, everybody ain't going to get it. He's still saying it. We have heard an illegitimate grace message that said to us that, no, it, no you, know, you know God. That's what the Laodiceans, that's what, that was their ideology. You know, you know, you bless, you know, God ain't, you know, you know, good will, God, you know, he ain't, he just gonna, I mean, we got grace, man. Come on, man. You do it like you want to do it. You do it as much as you want to do it. It don't matter how many people you hurt. God cover you. God, God got you. This is why we see so many men and women of God right now. We see them right now. They, they are the reason that so many people, are... we, the Laodiceans, they could talk all the church lingo. Man, they were incredibly smart. They were innovative. But they couldn't change their life. They wouldn't change their life. Somebody told them it was okay. That's why he says, you are lukewarm. Meaning you got part of that and part of this. I can't distinguish which one you are. I don't know which one you are. You can show talk to church talk. Man, you on, you on point. You know how to dance. Man, you are so gifted. You are so gifted. Man, you are so gifted. You know how to prophesy. You, listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Gifts and callings are uh, without repentance. You won't be able to prophesy. The devil will have you so wrapped up into yourself. The devil will get, listen, listen to me. The devil will get you so busy with doors opening up to you so that you will never come to the place that you do inventory on yourself. He keep you busy. He'll keep you busy. He'll keep you moving. He'll keep you moving constantly. And you never know that this is a red herring. He's got you busy enough for you never to do inventory. And what happens? You will look up and be old and you have completed the cycle over and over again. And you never know. Wow, man, I never got to the place in God that God had opened for me. And we're seeing people do that now. 
I will not be one of those ones. I will not be one of the ones. I have the power in God to say no to the thing that I know will wrap me up and keep me busy and keep me thinking that I'm all of that. I pray for God's grace every day, God. God, show me what you want me to do. Humble me enough. Help me to present myself humble enough that if you say yes, I go for it. But if you say no, I'm staying right where I am and not feel like I was deprived of anything. And once you allow that to happen, the Lord says, I will be your inheritance. The Lord says, I am your inheritance. I have you happy. When other people got seemingly to have more than you got, but they won't be happy as you are. Their life won't be as happy as your life. God know how to take care of you like nobody else take care. He know how to keep your house. He know how to keep your house. He know how to keep you from, from, the, from the trauma that the enemy, but it all happens in yes. And I, I am determined every day, Lord, not that I have obtained and have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I keep, keep my heart that I'm stretching and reaching for the mark. That's, that's right, a Pastor. Busy but not effective. Busy but not. We got to get this down. We are a new breed of people. Listen, people will talk about you because you decided that I'm going to make a stand for God. You decided. There are many of you, you're making a stand for God. You're making a stand. Now, I'm going to warn you, you're going to be an oddball right out the gate. <laughs> You are already know about just the very thought that I'm going to stand for God. I'm going to stand up in him. I'm going to stand up in him. You're going to be an oddball. You're going to be an oddball. That's okay. Stand up in him. Ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you desire for me to change? And allow him to speak clearly to you. It's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it. Now, listen, you might have some quote unquote doors shut in your face. <laughs> You might have some things that you might have thought you desired, but you are no longer there. You don't even live there any longer. God has, 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 I'm telling you, God will bless your life so tremendously. He will bless you with peace. He will bless your family with peace. He'll give you peace. You'll be able to stay at home with your wife and with your husband in peace. You hear me? with peace. I love, my wife is the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, I, I spend, I can spend all day, every day with Lady T. That's the way that God, that's the way God set up. He'll do it for you. He'll, he'll do it. He'll give you peace. He'll give you blessed children. He'll give it to you. This is all he's saying to you. Just follow my instructions. Do it the way I want. Now, it might take you a minute to get used to it because you've never done it before. But you got to let, allow the Lord to work you into it. Once you do it, you're going to form a habit just like everything else. You'll get up in the day ready to pray. You'll get up saying, Lord, I'm praying today. You won't get so caught up. The enemy try to jack your life up, busy your life. You'll say, wait a minute. I got to have devotion. If you are trying to come to commotion in your life, you got to start your day with devotion. As a matter of fact, this is a season now that we are called to pray more than we ever prayed before. What is prayer? Conversation. You need to have conversation with your maker. You need to allow him to say to you what your day is going to be like, who you're going to encounter, what it's going to be. So he'll let you know this person going to come. They're going to come with an attitude, but it's OK. You don't even have to worry about them. But when you have not prayed, it catches you off guard. You begin to say and do some things that you had no desire to do. I know I'm just talking. I'm talking to somebody because you need to hear this tonight because I'm telling you, we are moving into a season, the projections of the world, that everything is going downhill. But for those of us that live in kingdom, we know we're on an upward swing. <laughs> we're on an upward. Do you hear me? We're on an upward swing, people of God. You are on an upward swing. God sees and he knows. And he says, I'm coming. I'm coming because I promise. Whenever God has promised us something, he will not allow it not to come to pass if we follow his instruction. Let's pray together. Now, some of you are going to repent tonight. Again, we're going to repent. We're going to repent and we're going to repent. There's nothing wrong with it. Do it daily. Justin, David said, David said, David said, I'm praying for the sins I think I know and the things and the sins 
that I don't even know. I just want to be good with you. Now, I know there's people, I know there's teachings that that don't matter. You know what I mean? You don't have to do all that. God ain't calling all of that to happen. Can I say to you, can I say to you, yes, he is. God wants your life and your body to honor him. He, he desires that your actions, many of you have abused your body because you didn't know who you were. You thought the gist of your worth was through you abusing your body to somebody. God says he want to clean that up. He's not condemning you. He said, I want to clean it up. I love you. I love you. The Lord loves you more now than he's ever loved you before. Now it's your time to love him back. It's your time to love him back. And that's why you come into these teachings so that you'll know how and give instructions or get instructions on how to love him back. That's where we are. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you so much for this time of teaching, this time of sharing. God, your people, God, we hear your voice. We hear your word. Father, we repent. We repent. And God, we are vessels of honor. God, fit to be used by you. God, we open up our hearts. We give our life. We surrender all to you. God, as a vessel to be used only by you, Lord. Lord, it's the time of destiny. That's what you said in your word. I pray for those that have been struggling, God. God, it's been difficult to make a decision. I pray right now, when you said, God, in your word, that you would come with grace. God, we pray against every chain, every vice that has covered their life. Every word from the enemy that told them they couldn't, that they were nothing. Tonight, we come against it right now. We speak life. We speak life. We speak life into every life. And God, the grace to overcome, we speak it right now. We speak it right now in the name of Jesus. It is done in Jesus' name. I pray for those of you that are sick. Your bodies are healed in the name of Jesus. Your body is healed now in the name of Jesus. We don't war. We don't fight for healing because healing is our inheritance. It's our inheritance. We don't have to fight for what is a gift. We just receive the gift. Receive the gift. You are worthy of the gift. You are worth the gift because of who you are to God. He loves you. He loves you. That was the gist of my message is to tell you that the Lord loves you enough to give you life. And if you will accept it by your actions, if you will accept it, he's going to give you exactly what he told. I'm happy. I'm happy for you. I am happy for you. Welcome to your brand new life. Welcome to your brand new life. And this life is lived out of faith now. It might not look like it. It might not feel like it. I'm going to be honest with you. There are many days that I get up and it don't feel like it. It, it feels like a struggle. God, what is going on? I have to go into a praise session to get my mind right now. I'm being honest with you. And you're going to have to do the same thing. This is a fate walk. You're going to have to give God praise. And you're going to step into it by faith. And I need you to know this because the enemy is going to fight with you after this is over. The enemy is going to have somebody call you to try to disturb you. You got called an ID. You don't answer the phone. It's okay. I've been telling people this this week. You know when not to answer. If they're about to disturb you and get you disrupted, why are you answering them? You are not obligated to answer them. You are no longer their punching bag. You are no longer their trash can. You are no longer that. You don't have to. If they're talking something that does not agree with what God told you and where you are going, you have a right to say not today. I will not. I will not answer that. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Live at the level of God. You, listen, it's time for you to get your dedication together to God. It's time for you to get your consecration together. That's going to be your focus, your dedication and consecration. You will not live amongst people that tell you that it's not necessary. You are different from them. You're not better than them. You are different from them. Are you listening to me? They have, they have the opportunity to dig in too. You will have to understand this. I am set apart. I am, I, am, I am different because there is a mandate upon my life and I want to fulfill my mandate because that's the only place I'm going to be happy.
That's the only place you're going to be happy. New cars, new houses, they are great, man. They are wonderful, but they don't necessarily bring you happiness. It's not until you do what the Lord says do. It's not until you do what the Lord says do. And I'm thanking God that that's going to be your decision on tonight. Blessings to each of you. Thank you so much. Who's in the house? Who's in the house? <laughs> that's right. Apostle Kent Deloney, Lord, help us. We're going to have to have the help of the Lord. It doesn't happen unless the Lord help us. And, I, and I'm thankful for that because so often we think we get titled up. And, and we think that we got it. The, the enemy loves that. We're going to have to ask the Lord to help. We need the grace of God. We need the grace of God to make these decisions. Yes, we do. We need the grace of God. Thank you, Monica Jones, Connie Farrell, uh, uh, Apostle uh, Kent Deloney. Blessings to you. Apostle Rodney Henderson. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Tammy Edmund Willis. Blessings to you. Charlotte. Charlotte uh, Mason, uh, uh, Maris, those are our people, Fort Smith people. Blessings to you. Anthony Wayne Anderson, blessings to you. Uh, who else I got in this house? Uh, Mom, blessings to you. Lady T, blessings. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. Lady T will be right here blessing you guys and giving you words to say to start your new day. Yolanda Dawson, blessings to you. Pastor Darnisha, blessings to you. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? I'm trying to see the people I got. I want to bless everybody that's that's in here. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now y'all see at the bottom of the screen going across that network of believers Sunday morning, 10 a.m. I would love to have you be a part of our service. Come visit us. Come visit us. Come visit Kathy, Prophetess Kathy Kennedy. Blessings to you. Uh, my family is in the house. The Suggs. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Evil. Network of Eva uh, and Dale Young. Blessings, 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 blessings. Uh, uh, Minister Von Telly, Network of Blessings. Felita Finley, blessings, blessings. Steve Wilson is in the house. These are my home people. Donna Wilson, blessings. And I, I think I said Anthony Wayne. Annie Prunty, blessings, 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 blessings. All right, all right, all right. I think I got everybody that I see. If I don't call your name, it's because I didn't see you. But blessings to you. Thank you all for always tuning in. Thank you guys for always. You're always tuning in. And, and, and I'm thankful. I am so thankful to each of you. I, I, I am thankful. Y'all pray for me. I need your prayers. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I don't think I have apprehended anything. I, I, I keep. I keep. And I thank God. And I talk about this all the time amongst the people that I talk to. I thank God. I thank God for, for the, the mind in this particular season and time for the mind to want to please him. <laughs> Man, for those of you out here that want to please God, it, you are a rare breed. And it's not because you just blatantly not want to please him, but I mean, I'm talking to escape all of the teachings that we have been taught. That's why Jesus said to him that can overcome, he said, Ooh, it's a difficult and tough time. You're hearing a lot of things out here. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a diff it's difficult and it's tough. And so, and so, and so he's saying, yep, I understand. And so we got to, we got to, we got to know this. We got to know this. And so the Lord is saying to us, Hey, Hey, you're going to win. You're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. We've been winning and we're going to win. All right. I got to go. My time is up. Thank you so much again. Keep praying for Lady T and us. Pray for the, pray for the network of Believers Church. Uh, we pray that we be the, the place that God desires us to be, the house of healing. That's what our desire is, to be a house of healing. You can come as you are. You're going to leave inspired. We believe in the gifts of God. We believe in the power of God. We believe that God is showing himself strong in this season. We believe that God is doing something for his people. And we be, believe that the glory of God is returning. And we believe that we are vessels as well as you that are listening. You are vessels for the return of God's glory in the earth. And that's why your attacks are sometimes so extreme. It's almost seem like it's impossible to overcome. But that's okay. You will overcome. You will overcome. You will overcome everything. I'm putting the cash app address in there. 
so you can sow a seed on tonight. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much again. I got to get out of here. I love talking to y'all, but I've got to go. All right. Tomorrow is a brand new day. It's a brand new season. It starts tonight. Tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to feel different because the word of the Lord has come to your heart. You're going to act it out and you're going to go out because remember, he says, if you will, he would uh, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I think I think this is so powerful. He that overcome it will I grant to sit with me in my throne. I don't know if you understand what that means. That means that you're about to speak something and all of creation is about to listen and fall subject to what you're about to say. That's what it says. You're going to walk into places and spaces that you got to know in before. And because of your knowledge now, you're going to receive your yes. Get ready for your yes because it's well on the way. All right. Thank you so much again for tuning in, tuning in tonight. Thank you so much. I'm in, we're the NOB Church, and I'm appreciative to God. Come see us sometime. We love you. Don't forget, this Saturday, uh, February the 4th, we are at our uh, Mississippi location, Jehovah Summer, Mississippi, 10 a.m. Who go to church at 10 a.m. on a Saturday? We do. The house is going to be packed on Saturday. So we thank God for that. We thank God for his word. Amen. All right, Pastor David and Tanya, blessings to y'all. We'll see you guys this weekend. Uh, again, 6 a.m., Lady T will be doing early affirmation. And this uh, Friday, 12 noon, uh, catch our radio broadcast, 103.3 FM, 105.5, and 1380 a.m. Man, it's been an incredible moment in time of teaching and revelation. If for those of you that want prayer and you don't want to put it here, you can actually put it in our network of believers uh, network of believers uh, 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 page. Uh, inbox us. We, be, we believe in the power of prayer. And if you want to, I'm, li I'm watching the post even as we go off the air. If you need prayer, you can actually post it here on Facebook. All of us that are in here tonight are a group of believers. Believe me, we'll go in in prayer with you. You post on here what you desire for God to do in your life. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. I'm telling you, we're going to pray for you. We believe in prayer. And I love it. I'm excited when I see God doing a thing in people's life. I'm excited about it because every time God does something for somebody, you know what that indicates? And you got to know this. That indicates that the heavens are open and this is the season and the time that the waters are troubled. You can get the same thing. You can get the same thing. You just got indicated. There's somebody that's indicated. When I hear somebody got healed or something, that tells me that the heavens are open. Let me go in and receive it. Let me receive it. All right. So, again, put it in the inbox if you don't want it to be known, or you can put it right here. And there are people that are right here. There are people that are right here. I see believers right here that will pray for you and believe God. I got people right here in these comments that I see that has just gotten a miracle from God. And, and, and I'm telling you, this is a miracle season in God. You need to be believing him like you never believed him before. Stop letting people tell you what can happen when God says it can happen. Stop letting them tell you what can happen when God said that. Let me go. I'm talking too much. I will see you guys on Friday. Next time I see you on Friday. But, but again, yes, that's right, Donna. Put your prayer request and praise report right here on this wall. We are watching it even as we go. And we are believing God for you. It's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. We are out of here.